everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, okay, so we're going to take a slight switch out of the life history transitions thing, uh, not thing, theme that we've been talking about today, and we're going to talk, I think, a little bit more about trade-offs on an individual sense um, across shorter time periods. One of the things that I'm really interested in is applying life history theory to sexually selected traits. There's actually quite a bit of this already, especially in species that have these very distinctly differentiated uh, sexual strategies, like these side watch lizards and these um, resident versus um, uh, migratory salmon. <coughs> But you don't usually see the frame of looking at sexual selection as a resource trade-off between survival and, um, and actually putting energy into a trait in systems that have a little bit more of a, um, that have variation that's not as bimodal in their strategy. So how do you choose how much to invest? Um, if you are a little singing mouse, you've got to think about a whole bunch of different context cues, right? You have to think about what's my immune state, is there anything that might be coming to infect me? Uh, what's my energetic state? If I spend some energy on this, is there going to be more around later? What's my predation risk? Is there something you might overhear me and eat me? Uh, what's the social environment? Who's around me? Is there somebody that I want to hear? Is there somebody that I don't want to hear me? Uh, and my historical state, what do my experiences tell me about the local environment? These are all things that these animals have to take into consideration when they're deciding whether or not they want to signal. Okay, and then here we're going to focus really on that social environment aspect and that energetic state aspect because it's really hard to tackle all of these things at once. Okay, speaking of energetics, I work with a hormone called leptin. Uh, leptin was first discovered in the context of um, obesity research. There was an OBOB line of mice um, when this peptide was isolated and injected into these OBOB mice, they suddenly stopped being obese. Everyone went, hurrah, we have solved the obesity epidemic. Uh, this was, I believe, 20 years ago, 30 years ago now. So uh, did not solve the obesity epidemic. One of the things that is interesting about leptin in the uh, context of satiety is that if you inject an animal that is not fasted with leptin, that if you inject an animal whose leptin levels are above a certain threshold, nothing happens to their general satiety. Um, they don't eat less. They keep on going as before. So a lot of the time when people talk about leptin, they talk about it in this uh, kind of drop below a certain threshold leptin, uh, of, of leptin, you go hunt and, or forage or find something to eat. Uh, as long as you're below that, uh, as long as you're above that threshold, everything is fine and you don't, it doesn't really have any effect. Um, it's secreted also by adipose tissue here, which is why we've got the diagram there. Okay, the thing about leptin is that after further research, it turns out leptin actually responds to a whole bunch of different contextual so uh, high leptin levels are negatively correlated with sleep deprivation. Uh, that <coughs> chronic sleep deprivation will drop your leptin levels. Um, also correlated with depression, there are some people who are looking into leptin as a potential antidepressant. Uh, probably not very lucrative, but people are trying. Uh, leptin levels that are higher also correlate, oh, sorry, low leptin levels are correlated with anxiety slash fear behavior. So as it turns out, having high leptin levels actually can blunt um, corticosterone responses and other stress responses. People with lower leptin levels are more sensitive to stress and uh, fear perturbations. It's also, uh, high, sorry, low leptin levels are also correlated with anesthetic loss of ovulation, um, with delays in puberty, uh, and leptin level, low leptin levels also make you more susceptible to immune challenges. Lots of things here that are kind of different from that, uh, that kind of points to leptin being involved in more processes than just whether or not I need to go forward right now. Okay. Great introduction to singing mice, because more people have heard of them now than when I started working with them, but still not that many. These guys are these little brown mice, which is their other common name. They live in the cloud forest of Costa Rica, and they sing. 
Let's see if this works. Come on. Oh no, wait. No. This is a video that is theoretically supposed to play, and it is not playing. And I promise, too. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to the slideshow for a minute. And what they do is they throw their little heads back. You can kind of see in this guy back here, he's throwing his head up and they chirp like little birds. They're actually really easy to hear um, if you can hear it to a certain frequency. Uh, I've heard them from as far away as the football field. They're pretty loud. Um, as far as we can tell, they're using these songs to communicate both with opposite sex animals. So males will sing um, and females will approach them to keep playing their recordings out in the wild. Uh, other males will also approach, and if they find a singing mouth there, they'll initiate a fight. So it seems to be kind of both advertising your fighting ability, or at least your willingness to start one, <laughs> and also trying to attract mates in these guys. So, how does Left In influence song investment? So what I did was, I took um, about a milligram per kil uh, kilogram of leptin, injected them with either leptin or saline. So the leptin in orange, the saline in blue, uh, will be the theme for the talk. And then they were exposed to one of three stimuli um, in a randomized order. So I would play out uh, one song, another song, another song, about a minute apart, then they had a total of 20 minutes to respond. I would also, they'd also get a silence presentation, they'd have a song presentation, and this would be in a randomized order to minimize the possibility of order effects. So when we looked at that data, we do find that the leptin injected mice do sing more, they respond more quickly than their saline injected counterparts. Um, they produce a fair number more songs, and they produce them faster. Uh, however, we were pretty puzzled when we looked at the data to find that there wasn't really a clear effect of stimulus type, especially in the leptin injected animals. We were pretty sh we'd expect to see something like relatively little response to the silence uh, condition, pretty high response to the contemplative song condition, and then a tone condition that was maybe intermediate. Remember when I said that we were trying to minimize order effects? Turns out that they're really strong in this species. Once they've heard a conspecific song, they actually react really differently um, to the like to all future stimuli, they, uh, especially the tone stimuli. So they'll really ramp up their response to tone once they've previously heard a song during that day. Uh, we actually wound up recoding the data to pre-song and post-song for each trial, and it which came out to in a linear regard. Uh, uh, when we did a linear selection uh, analysis, uh, the stimulus identity itself dropped out completely in favor of whether or not this trial was pre song or post song. Okay. Uh, so that social context is quite important. We also wanted to know if changes in energy balance were causing male singing mice to adjust the song quality. So these guys have really stereotyped songs. If you familiar with bird work, you'll know that often birds will have different syllables that they'll combine in different ways, and they'll learn these things, and they'll really build on each other. That's not the case for these guys. They have a very stereotyped song. It's always this long trill, so it's about seven seconds, and it always um, changes a stereotyped way over the progression of the song. So at the beginning, it'll be relatively short sweets, and as the song uh, progresses, they'll get louder and longer and a little bit uh, higher in bandwidth but they'll also be a little further apart. So, turns out that when you look at the actual song composition, these leptin injected songs are shorter with fewer notes uh, than the saline injected animals. <coughs> 
Now, the problem with this uh, analysis is that I don't actually have a ton of the songs that are collected from sailing animals in pre-song conditions. They just didn't make very many. I had one animal who sang in that condition. But if you look at just the post-song individuals, if you just look at focus on that leptin context, um, you'll notice the leptin injected animals produce shorter songs. And they also, and it's definitely driven by number of notes. So number of notes is less, song length is less, average note length is not different. Um, that duty cycle is a measure of um, how quickly they're progressing through the song. That's not different, neither is frequency. It definitely seems to be driven primarily by differences in the note number that they produce. The interesting thing about this is that songs that are produced after hearing conspecific songs follow the same pattern. So if I, this is just within leptin animals, this is pre-song versus post-song trials. Those songs that are created post-song are again significantly shorter with significantly fewer notes than the um, songs that were produced in a pre-song condition. So it looks like they're, it looks like either they are producing more but fewer, uh, like lower quality songs possibly in response to potential uh, male intruders, or they're just not able to sustain the length of songs that they were they previously would have attempted to attain. Uh, okay, where are we on time? There it is. Ah, okay, so I think I breezed through a little faster than I wanted to, but um, if you're interested in this, I also have a joint poster that I've, I'll be presenting uh, with my collaborators at Poster Board 57, Monday at 5.30 p.m. I think I've got a few minutes for questions. slicing the time out between those notes and adjusting a song that way, and females do prefer, they artificially shorten the interval interval. Um, mostly we've been trying to get uh, control of the estrous cycle before we do more female preference studies, and that's been uh, surprisingly difficult. 